The last thing we'll do today is review by going over some of the problems from a previous midterm. These are taken mostly from fall 2012, midterm one. I would suggest that you go through those questions before watching this video and try to solve them yourself because I'm going to give away all the answers. Here we go. One kind of problem is to predict what Python will print and what call expressions will it be evaluated to. So the following question focuses on the concept that the print function, which is built in, always returns none. It also displays its arguments separated by spaces when it is called as a side effect. Let's assume that we executed this import statement and this def statement, and then we typed in an expression, you figure out what it evaluates to and what it prints as a side effect of being evaluated. So if I said the expression is five, you'd say it evaluates to five and nothing is printed. Or if I asked print five, it would evaluate to none. And as a consequence of evaluation, it would print five. What about print add three, four, print five? In order to evaluate this, we evaluate first the operator, which gives us the print function that's built in, and then the two operands, add three, four evaluates to seven, print five evaluates to none. And as a consequence of evaluating that operand, five is printed. Then seven and none are passed as arguments to the print function, which evaluates to none, but as a consequence, prints its arguments separated by a space. So you see seven space none. Let's do another one. Assume that I also typed in the following definition. Delay arg prints delayed, then defines a function g that takes no arguments and returns arg, and that g is returned. And then we try to evaluate the following call expression. First, we need to understand what delay does. So we have a name arg, which is not a formal parameter of g, but is a formal parameter of the enclosing function delay. So names and nested def statements can refer to their enclosing scope. So delay is a function that takes an argument and then returns a function of no arguments that returns that original argument. Now we have a very big nested compound call expression. In order to evaluate it, first we evaluate its operator. In order to evaluate that, first we evaluate its operator. In order to evaluate that, first we evaluate its operator. <laughs> now we have a call expression whose operator and operand are just names, delay, delay. So when I call delay on delay, I print delayed. And then I get back a function that when called will give me back this argument, which is the delay function. So I call it here. I now have the delay function. And then I call delay on six. When I call delay on six, it prints delay and returns a function that will return six. I call that function and I get the value six. One more print delay print call that and then call it on four. What does this one do? Well, we have to first evaluate this operand, which means evaluating this operator, which means evaluating its operator. So we delay print, that prints delay. Now we get back the print function when we call it, and we call print on four, which prints four. So now we have the value of print four passed to print, and that's none, so we print none. And since the whole thing is a call to print, which always returns none, the value is none. Let's do one more. Since it's talk like a pirate day today, let's assume that we typed in def pirate arg, which prints matey and then defines plunder, which takes an argument arg and returns arg, and then returns plunder. And here's an expression. Add pirate three, square four, one. How does this work? 
Well, the key thing to remember is that a name evaluates to the value bound to that name in the earliest frame of the current environment in which that name is found. There's nothing wrong with drawing an environment diagram to understand what's going on here. But the important thing to note is that when I return arg here, it will be this arg and not that arg, because this will be in the first frame of the environment of a call to plunder. So what happens here? Well, we have a function called pirate, which always returns the identity function, but it also prints matey along the way. So plunder arg return arg is just a function that returns whatever's passed in. So when I pirate three, I do print matey, but I get back the identity function. So when I pass square to it, then it's going to evaluate to the square function. So this whole thing is the square function and if I square four, I get 16 and add one, I get 17. And prints matey because I called the pirate function. If I pirate 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 of five, seven, what happens there? Well, in order to evaluate the whole thing, I evaluate this operator, which has itself a compound operator, which itself has a compound operator. So the first thing I do is I pirate this pirate, which prints matey, and then returns the identity function. I call pirate on that, I print matey again, and return the identity function, which I call on five. So I get back five. So everything before this line that I'm drawing right now evaluates to five, which is a number. When I try to call a number, I get an error. Let's look at an environment diagram. We define a function called horse mask, which binds the name horse to mask, then defines a function mask, taking an argument horse and returns that horse. And then, after we define this function, we don't return either horse or mask, but instead we call horse on mask and return that value. We also define mask is a function that takes an argument horse and calls it on two. And then eventually we call horse on mask. So we've defined horse there is this function with this body. And we've defined mask is the value of this lambda expression which is a function of one argument. And then we're gonna call horse on mask. So we call this function horse. We pass in whatever is currently bound to mask is this function. And since this has a formal parameter mask, we bind this mask to that lambda expression. Okay. The next thing we do is say horse equals mask. So we look up mask in the current environment, it's here, and we bind that to the name horse. So now we have two names for the same function and another name for that function up here. Next, we define mask. So we create that function since it's a nested def, its parent is the frame in which it was defined, F1. So we label this, we mark the parent of that, and we bind that to the name mask, the third step of a def statement. Okay, since we have mask, meaning this function, which I just defined, it can no longer be bound to this lambda function because within a frame, a name can refer to only one value. So that line is gone. Next, we evaluate the return expression horse mask. What's horse? It's there. What's mask? It's there. So we're gonna call this function on that function. So we're calling this function, which means we introduce a new frame. It's a lambda frame. The formal parameter of the lambda function is horse and it will be bound to the argument that we pass in. That's whatever is currently bound to mask. Next thing we do is we call horse on number two. Which horse? This horse, which is this function. Its intrinsic name is mask and its parent we copy into the frame is F1. Does it have formal parameters? Well, which function is it? It's the mask horse function that we defined up here. So its formal parameter horse is bound to the argument value two. And what does it do? It returns the current horse, which is two. So it returns two. The lambda expression returned horse of two. This call to horse returned horse mask, which is two. And we're finished.